Hi, and welcome to Psychic Today. I'm your host, Jill Roberts, and we're going to continue with the Crystalline Exploration Series. Today, I want to talk about three amazing stones that really get to the heart of the matter and connect you to the earth. And they're great for shamanic work, if you're doing any journeying, they're amazing in meditation. I just can't say enough about these three stones. So before I get into that, I have a voice message from Jenna, and I want to know if I have your permission to play it for the next episode, because I would like to address what you were talking about and do a whole episode just on clear audience, which is uh, clear hearing of the psychic senses, okay? So if you could just email me or leave me another voice message and let me know that it's okay to use your message on the show. For anybody else who does leave me a voice message, just know that it can be used in another episode in the future. So that is just something that will happen if it's something that I feel that um, needs to be addressed. And we haven't done a lot of uh, psychic senses in a while, even though I do have episodes on mediumship. Um, I would like to, you know, go back and forth between the crystalline exploration and other things. I'm also going to be talking about... um, Uh, a book I received about power animals and totem animals uh, with shamanic journeying and shamanism. So um, I'm going to be doing another episode on, on that. I just did an episode of an introduction to what shamanism is and the three worlds. So we have a lot of exciting things coming up and There's just so much to talk about. Um, I, of course, my passion lies in stones, but the stones raise my vibrations to do other things like channeling and using, utilizing my psychic senses and my evidential mediumship work or, you know, whatever the case may be. So I would like to start going back on other type of um, subject matter. But for now, I know we were going through these astrolites, and I just want to give you a break from that (laughs) because there's so many of them. And the last few episodes, I've just been delving into these astrolites so that way you knew about each one in case, you know, you do want to make yourself your own energy um, vortex power pouch is what I call them um, with all of the zestulites and some other stones in order to recreate the um, energy of those sacred sites that we may not live near or are able to get to. There's also um, chakras that pertain to the earth. The earth has its own chakras. So that in itself is an episode. (laughs) There's actually around approximately 156 places that contain chakras in the earth, but I will just do, of course, the first few. So the stones that I want to talk about today are coralite, uh, which is from New Zealand, uh, coromandel stonewood, and circle stones. So stay tuned, and I'll be right back. Hi, and welcome back to the Crystalline Exploration Series here on Psychic Today. I'm your host, Jill Roberts, and the first stone we're going to talk about is Coralite. Now, some key words with Coralite are link with nature, longevity, purification, self-healing, love, wisdom, majesty, patience, humor, Of course, access to the Akashic Records, and especially Lemuria. 
The element, of course, is earth, and it affects all of the chakras. Coralite is not actually a stone. It's sort of like amber. It's um, actually a petrified tree resin. But in the case of coralite, the resin is formed only from the ancient quarry trees native to New Zealand. The substance is considered to be copal, which means it's non-fossilized, as opposed to amber, which is fossilized. And it exhibits different physical traits. Um, a similar physical trait is that it's very light, like amber. But you would know the difference right away uh, with between amber and coralite. And I'll explain that in a minute. Um, well... For right now, I can tell you that if you rub it, um, whether you're activating your palm chakras and you decide to rub it in between, depending on how big the piece is, it'll um, give you this really kind of different fragrance. It's almost like um, a combination of pine and um, floral. It's something that... I, I can't even, something I've never smelled before. So that's the best way I can put it. It's, it's actually a beautiful scent. But the scent goes away after a few seconds. It's only when you rub the, rub the not the stone, but rub the coralite that you can smell it. And of course, um, when you first get your stones, you know, it's really great to look at the stone physically with your eyes first before you try and even connect with it. And um, then what I do is I activate my palm chakras and I hold it at my heart first. And of course, this is after doing the heart alignment. So going from the third eye to the throat to the heart to the solar plexus. Um, you can do that, I find, with the stone, if you like. And sometimes that's, the stone will give you more insight as into, you know, what it can do and how you can work together. Um, some people uh, take some crumbled bits from it and, use, and burn it as an incense to purify their environment. Um, I'm not going to do that because I have, I have a piece that's about an inch and a quarter big height and uh, maybe an inch and a half wide, and I don't want to crumble any pieces off of it. <laughs> but anyway, you can use it as a resin for incense. Um, now about the quarry trees, because they're very different. They excrete coralite resin that has been in existence for over 150 million years, going as far back to the dinosaur age. The extraordinary vitality of the quarry trees and longevity make them, most the, make them amongst the most ancient, still living tree species. They were once vast tracts of New Zealand, but 19th century logging of quarry trees for ships and for timber decimated them almost to extinction. So now New Zealand has them protected. The petrified resin, which is what the coralite is, is called capia by the native Maoris and the carry gum by the European colonizers. The Maoris used it for torches, fire starting, and chewing gum. Europeans discovered that it made an excellent varnish when combined with linseed oil. Consequently, a quarry gum industry that lasted for several decades caused most of the resource to be extracted. Today, coralite is found in much smaller amounts, sometimes washing up on riverbanks or beaches. <clears throat> the resin produced by living quarry trees must cure for thousands of years before it's transformed into true coralite. So that makes it that much even uh, more um, not just ancient, but gives you so much more wisdom because the resin itself takes thousands of years to form. So, you know, coralite carries a tremendous amount of life force. 
It brings an infusion of prana into one's auric field and your liquid crystal body matrix. It could be because coralite comes from the hardy and long-lived trees whose life stream spans millions of years. And the Cori being is strongly present in coralite and is naturally friendly to humans. Love is simply in the nature of the Cori being, as is wisdom, majesty, patience, and humor. When you align with coralite, you resonate with all of these qualities. So, it, you know, it's great because it can work metaphysically to enhance your physical, mental, and emotional vitality. It's great. It's a great material for all types of healing practices, lending energetic support to the immune system, as well as one's blood and lymph systems. Cori trees produce natural ant uh, microbial. I can't even pronounce that for some reason. Um, invasions and other types of illness. Coralite is itself a liquid crystal substance which, you know, maybe is why it's so strong for healing. And it connects with our own liquid crystal cells and tissues. Coralite is a purifying substance. Of course, crumbled pieces can be burned like incense to clear your area, to purify your aura, or to energetically cleanse crystals and stones. If you carry or wear coralite, um, it, um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, my notes are all over the place. Carrying or wearing Coralite can renew your energy, your energy field, bring a wholesome sense of well-being. Coralites are amongst the best of all trees for absorbing and transmuting carbon dioxide and replenishing the air we breathe. Coralite embodies the quality of purification for spiritual application of all types. It works spiritually as an enhancer of longevity and exposure to the substance links one with the qualities of the trees themselves, including their long-lived nature. There are currently um, quarry trees that are at least 1,200 years old, and some of the eldest quarries have lived, of course, over 2,000 years that are still in existence now. Um, Coralite offers a direct connection with consciousness of nature. This is why I find it um, wonderful as a connection to Gaia, to mother nature, and makes it a wonderful stone to do shamanic work with. Um, it helps one to inwardly hear the voice of wisdom and converse with the soul of nature. And of course, it helps you to gain access to the Akashic records. So you can do a lot of path life stuff with this too. You know, when you access your own Akashic records, and I would like to do uh, an episode on that too, because I am a soul realignment, um, divine soul blueprint practitioner. And it's really, really involved. But in getting in touch with the Akashic Records, you can see how many incarnations your soul has, where your soul has been as far as other perhaps star systems, or if this is your first incarnation, and where you are now and where you're going. So the Akashic Records is an amazing tool to utilize for past life work. Um, it This stone really resonates energetically with amber, of course. Copal, and as well as sorolite is estrolyte, which we're gonna be talking about soon. Red fire is estrolyte, vortexite, vitalite, empowerite, and revelation stone. It works synergistically um, with heliorite, sugalite, and seraphonite for spiritual self-healing. For emotional well-being, it, be, it can be combined with azumar, lithium light, lilac lapidolite, and laramar. 
for purification. It works well with Jet, Black Tourmaline, Amazes, or Light 23. And for shamanic journeying work or just connecting with the earth, I find it goes great with um, the uh, Circle Stones from England, um, the Coromandel the Coromandel Wood, and Rose Sophia. So if you really want to connect to Mother Nature, it's these are the stones that I'm going to be talking about today, and this is one of them that is great to utilize for that. You can use all three stones or all four stones at certain places and certain chakras to help with the process. I found um, when I did my initial greeting with the Coralite energetic being, um, I just got this overwhelming sensation of bright, bright, like golden light. And it just slowed me down. It kind of, you know, made me realize that I do need to get out in nature more. It's very hard here in Manhattan where, you know, you have high rises all around you and cement all around you that, you know, we don't really get a chance to go to parks and stuff as much as we'd like. And compared to other places, you know, if even if I had a house, I'd be able to go into the backyard and, and sit and meditate, and that would be wonderful. That would be, as, you know, perfect as far as getting in touch with nature. But it also helps me to realize I need to slow down and stop to smell the roses, so to speak, to not let life, you know, get away with, get away from me by having so much to do and so much responsibility that I'm not finding enough time for self-care, self-love, and to connect with Mother Nature. So for everyone, this is an amazing stone to help you reconnect not only with Mother Nature, but with yourself. So stay tuned. I'll be right back with the next stone in our Earth series. Have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? When I was trying to get this podcast off the ground, I had so many questions, like how do I record an episode? Where do I find background music? How do I get my show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all the other places people like to listen? Where do I find advertisers? The answer to every one of these questions is really simple. Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, distributing, and monetizing your podcast. And best of all, it's 100% free and 100% ridiculously easy to use. Literally, it's a push of the button. I can't express how easy it is to get your content out there because as podcasters, we have a tough enough time dealing with our content, let alone dealing with technology and the confusion of paying to have it done. With Anchor, it's free and it's easy. And that's the most important thing because I care about content. I want my content out to you. So if you've always wanted to start a podcast, go to anchor.fm slash start. That's A-N-C-H-O-R dot F-M slash start to join me and the diverse community of podcasters already using Anchor. That's anchor.fm slash start. I can't wait to hear your podcast. Hi, and welcome back. We're doing the Crystalline Exploration Series of Psychic Today. I'm your host, Jill Roberts. And the next stone that I'd like to talk about is Circle Stone. 
and some keywords here are attunement to Earth's consciousness, awaking dormant capacities, being co-creative in union with the world's soul, visionary knowledge of the future, and co-creating the future. Believe it or not, this element for this stone is storm, but it is very much an earth stone. Um, the chakras that it affects predominant, predominantly is the sixth energy center, which is the third eye, the seventh, which is the crown, and all of the etheric chakras above the head. Now, circle stone is the name given to pieces of, it's actually flint, that have been gathered from within crop circle formations in England. Flint is a sedimentary rock composed entirely of silica. It occurs as uh, concretions in bands or nodule form and in limestones, especially chalk. Its color is usually black, brown, or tan. It is marine in origin. Flint is hard, it's tough, but it can fracture. Flakes of flint were used by primitive people for making arrowheads, uh, scrapers, and some other tools, and it contains in intervertebrate fossils. The areas of England where crop circles occur are rich in the chalk that creates optimal conditions for the formation of flint. In many parts of Wiltshire, the nexus of the crop circle activity. The entire area is underlain with white chalk a few feet below the surface. So raw, raw chunks of flint are common in these fields. Some investigators speculate that the mineral content of the land in these areas somehow facilitates the creation of the crop circle formations by whatever process or intelligence brings them about. Um, I find that these are very powerful, but yet soft stones. Um, they do have um, a quality to them of technology that is beyond our comprehension at this point. Um, and I don't know if that has to do with the whole crop circle thing, probably, but you know, um, it, it's, it has to have some effect on it. Um, so while I was looking through um, the Book of Stones, Robert Simmons had um, an interesting story. For him, um, in the summer of 2007, he traveled to England um, to speak at a crystal and sound healing conference in Glastonbury. And Glastonbury has an abbey there with the supposed remains of King Arthur. And of course, if you know me, I am also an Arthurian scholar and historian, so I write books on the subject. So for me, these sacred sites like Stonehenge, I mean, I've spent so many years in England. Um, Glastonbury is one of my favorite places to visit while I'm there. But on one of his first dates of sightseeing, um, he was uh, surprised to discover the mysterious crop circles in a wheat field adjoining um, the Avesbury Stone Circle, which is a megalithic monument akin to such ancient sites as Stonehenge. So when he entered the crop circle, you know, he felt this powerful spiraling current of energy rising out of the ground and moving up through his body. On the ground within the circle, um, they found several unusual looking stones that later they ident uh, he identified as flint. And when he and his wife held the stones, they suddenly realized they were carrying the same currents as the crop circles themselves. Even though it was nearly sunset, they hurried back to their car and they went searching, of course, for more crop circles. You know, a wild uh, series of synchronicities can ensue when you use circle stones. And even though they're flint, they're from this kind of like Roswellite in the sense of 
the formation of the stones were from very nearby the crash site. Well, circle stones are the same thing. They are from around or inside these crop circles, which, you know, amazes so many people. I, for one, and I'm sure maybe yourself, um, when you look at them from an aerial view, it's amazing how beautiful they are and how otherworldly they are. So uh, when you work with them in meditation, um, see what you feel. For me, I started to feel um, tingling in my feet. And believe it or not, not on the palm chakras of my hands, but on the outside of my fingers, which was the first time that ever happened to me. Usually everything kind of corresponds with the energy centers. And for me, it, it didn't. Um, you can sleep with them under your pillow, um, but you know, it'll give you, it might be a little bit too, let's say caffeinated. <laughs> because it's a very high vibrational stone, but, you know, it gives you in a tremendous amount of feeling of life force and the emotional tone is kind of, of joy. So, um, you know, circle stones have been awakened by the self that is the heart of the earth. They've waited for the rightness of time and, you know, they're brought to the present joy by the gesture of Mother Nature, of her love, the earth. Her wisdom flows through them like living water and the chords of her rhythm resonate through inner latices and music resonates through harp strings. It's almost like listening to a Celtic um um, flute and violin and copulation of music, <clears throat> especially the music I use when I do guided meditations for you guys. Um, she, you know, she speaks to us through them, through the stones, and the speech itself is not words. It's that which reaches into us and brings forth the awe of recognition. It's almost like a stone that helps you awaken or remember who you are. So it's just incredibly astounding uh, of holding this stone and feeling the love of the earth and the intense um, love of engendered by your first glimpse of her. She offers the grace of spiritual nourishment beyond measure and invites us to a higher calling than we've ever known, a kind of spiritual marriage of our hearts with hers. So the vibrations of the circle stones deeply stimulate the heart chakra, you know, sometimes they can bring people to tears of appreciation and, and gratitude. Um, they stimulate the third eye and crown chakras, uh, facilitating visionary states. The currents of circle stones can penetrate deeply into the brain, you know, stimulating dormant areas and stirring inner capacities. They bring the light of awakening to the dark areas of the mind or the brain and the heart where our forgotten or never known potentials are sleeping. Carrying or wearing or meditating with these stones can help us become aware of more of what we can be. Sleeping or meditating with circle stones can help bring one into conscious relationship with spiritual intelligence that gives rise to crop circles themselves. Longer meditation with the stones could take one very deep, much deeper than any stone there is. You know, it's almost like Roswellite in the sense of it's, you know, or Moldavite, which is it's not, you know, 
it is of the earth, but not of the earth. Um, in one of my long meditations with circle stones, it showed me um, my sim- visions of my symbols. As an evidential medium, <clears throat> I have certain symbols that mean certain things, and every medium has them. Um, they're never the same from medium to medium because every person is different. So while I was meditating with these um, stones, I was shown um, some prophetic visions um, and some stuff that I really needed to manifest. So, you know, the stones themselves can tell you their purpose and they can enlarge you know, human consciousness so that we can learn to both see and co-create the future. This entails a true spiritual metamorphosis in which we become a new kind of being, fulfilling our potential in the same way a butterfly fulfills the potential of the caterpillar. If we do so, the purpose of Circle Stones will be accomplished and the world soul will have her essential partners, fully awakened human beings. Circle stones resonate very strongly with Moldavite and Azestulite with mutual, with mutual um, amplification of their currents and qualities. Because of the highly advanced qualities manifested through circle stones, it is best used in combination with the Azestulites and other stones that have been through the super activated um, as a Zeo process. Also, uh, phenakite can bring an enhancement of the third eye stimulation that the circle, so- circle stones provide. And herderite will strengthen it if its effects for waking dormant brain areas. So spiritually, these stones rapidly expand your awareness. They unlock hidden potentials of the mind and brain and they aid you in attaining awareness of the future and influence over its unfolding. Emotionally, circle stones are, in a sense, beyond the normal range of emotions, but they do awaken excitement over the expansion of consciousness, and they reveal the world's soul, an experience that triggers intense love for her. Physically, Circle stones support vibrant health and full activation of the brain and nervous system. And, you know, it's also a stone of just being, being present in the now. Even though there is co-creation with the future, you have to remember and awaken to who you are now in order to do that. And circle stones are an amazing tool for that. I have both a tumbled and a raw circle stone. And of course I prefer the raw because it's natural. It's the way it was, you know, put on this earth. It has all of its energy and its, (laughs) and its currents and it's not hampered down by a, um, tumbling process that, you know, cuts her energy in half. So I have meditated with both. I know a lot of you probably prefer tumble stones because they look prettier. But if you're serious in meditation, I really do suggest you get raw stones whenever possible, if possible. Um, There's an amazing affirmation here for crop. um, I call them crop circle stones because that's what they are to me. Um, And this is what it is. I choose to enter into consciousness, loving relationship with the world soul, and to join her in co-creating a blessed earth. I'll say it one more time, a lot slower, in case you want to jot it down. I choose to enter into consciousness. Again, that's I choose to enter into consciousness. Loving relationship with the world soul. Loving relationship with the world soul. 
and to join her in co-creating a blessed earth. And to join her in co-creating a blessed earth. Now, that's it for the circle crop stones. But um, I want your opinion on something. And if you can leave me a voice message in the notes or shoot me an email at info at psychicmediumnyc.com, let me know if you guys would like to learn about channeling. Because I would love love, love to teach you a bit of that. I can't teach you all of it in an episode, but <clears throat> I like to teach you um, certain certain things about medium shirt, certain things about um, opening your psychic senses, certain things about shamanism, and certain things about channeling. And the reason why I'm going so in-depth with these stones is because they raise our vibration. They expand our consciousness. And that helps with all of the other stuff that I just mentioned. So I know it's there's a lot of episodes on stones, but the stones are important. And the stones that I talk about have to directly deal with all of those, um, those abilities all of the clear senses, all of connecting with spirit, all of shamanic journeying, channeling, and these things I would love to teach. And I, I intend on teaching, and I will be giving courses on that, and I will give you more information about that at another time. But I just want to know if channeling is something that you guys would be interested in learning about. Okay, so I'll be right back with the last stone, and the last stone we're going to do is Coromandel Stonewood. Stay tuned, I'll be right back. Welcome back. This is the Crystalline Exploration Series of Psychic Today. I'm your host, Jill Roberts. And today, the last stone we're going to be talking about is Coromandel Stonewood. So let me give you a couple keywords first. Awareness of Earth's ancient memories. Time travel to the past. Lemurian consciousness. Receptivity linked to the Earth's heartbeat, telomere protection, and longevity. The element here is Earth, and the chakras are, of course, all, and especially the root chakra, which is the first energy center. Now, Coromandel st stonewood is the name given to a type of petrified wood. And it's native to the Coromandel Peninsula in New Zealand. It is known technically as the pseudomorphous of chalcedony or jasper after wood. Its color is primar primarily a rich brown and is sometimes marked with flecks of black, gray, and occasionally red. It's a silicon dioxide mineral with a hexagonal crystal system and a hardness of seven. Coromandel stonewood and other petrified woods in New Zealand formed when New Zealand was still attached to the Gondwana land. This is known as the Middle Jurassic period, about 170 million years ago. The trees were tropical trees, not known to new, what New Zealand has today. So like the Coralite, the Coromandel stonewood is another stone from New Zealand. The piece I have is quite beautiful. It is, of course, tumbled. Um, and even it being a tumble stone, it is very strong vibrationally. So it's okay to get this one tumbled if you can't. I don't know if you can get it raw. I haven't been able to find it raw, but if I do, I will let you know. Um, so 
Coromandel Stonewood carries deep memories of ancient Earth. Again, like the Coralite, it, it is very much connected to Lemuria. Um, whereas the Circle Stones were connected to Mother Earth and um, the Earth's consciousness, this is going further back. So it also helps with time travel, Lemurian consciousness, receptivity, the link to the Earth's heartbeat, like I said, and telomere projection. So the deep memories of ancient Earth, of course, Lemuria is going to come up. So it's, I'm sure all of you have uh, or know about Lemurian seed um, quartz crystals where there's etching on the side and if you use them in meditation and you rub your finger up and down the etchings, you're supposed to be able to, you know, get the memory and the wisdom and the knowledge that's inside the stone. So this is another one of those stones. There's no etchings on it, enable to do that. And it's not a quartz, but it has, if not, you know, even more strength for this. Okay. It holds in its stormy interior, the impressions that reverberated through the planet during many of the most profound transformations. Coromandel Stonewood recalls the breaking apart of the great single continent known as Gondwana land and the separation of New Zealand from the larger land masses of the world. It can link one to the uh, repository of planetary memory. Sometimes they call that the Akashic records. Um, and through this link, it can trigger the consciousness connection to any part of the earth's history at least as far back as the age of the stones themselves. If you work with Coromandel um, Stonewood and Shamanic Journeying, you may find that the capacity to time travel to the past has suddenly been activated. When I greeted this stone and I did my initial um, attunement and alignment, um, without even looking to see what the stone is capable of. I like to hear it from my stones first. And time travel was a big part of it. Being able to go back and forth. Um, and it gave me, again, the symbolism for me of, you know, time travel. So that, of course, got me very excited. <laughs> um, Cor Cormandel Stonewood, you know, is present in New Zealand but it was present in New Zealand as well in the times of Lemuria. And it can be, and it can help one experience visions of the Lemurian world once present in New Zealand and on other nameless islands now sunk beneath the sea. Through its Lemurian connection, Coromandel Stonewood is a stone of deep intuition, empathy, and bodily knowing. It encourages you to um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm lost, um, to envision the potential for a Lemurian revival of the world today. And it suggests that a new consciousness for which humanity is destined is one of the empathic rapport as the, as the basis of all interaction. So a lot of us are empathic, which means you feel what others feel. You don't just feel sympathy for someone who's in pain or who's upset. You know, you actually feel their feelings. And, you know, a lot of people say it's a blessing and a curse. It truly is a blessing. I will get these. I'm empathic. And when I get empathic feelings, I get this sinking feeling in my stomach. And I get upset. And I won't go away until I figure out who it is that I'm feeling that about, who's feeling that way. And 
once I figure out who it is that has the problem, and when this happens spontaneously, it's usually a family member or a friend, when I find out who it is, that feeling immediately goes away. So what this is talking about is a revival of Lemuria, where empathy is going to be the basis for the world. And it also suggests that the new, I, the new consciousness, like I said, um, for which humanity is destined, is one of in the empathic rapport. There is no facades or deceit. All humans will know and be known by one another. In such a consciousness, war and other competitive acts will give way to compassion and cooperation. These emotions are aroused through a deep contemplation with Coromandel Stonewood and may be previews of days to come. It's almost like John Lennon's Imagine. It would be wonderful. And it is such an amazing um, vision to have and what that would feel like. So when you go into deep meditation with Coromandel Stonewood, this is what is going to come up for you. And it is a joyful feeling. You know, it's, it's a feeling of having more control, believe it or not, by giving up control. And by not judging others. Because who are we to judge somebody else? You know, we haven't walked in their shoes. We don't know the intimate details of their life, no matter how close we are with that person. So, you know, sometimes we give unwanted advice and we shouldn't unless it's asked for. Even if it's asked for, it's still, you know, at this point in, in our evolution, it's just none of our business. One day it will be our business because we'll all be empathic. We'll all know how each other feels and we'll all want to make sure we all feel better, especially if we're sharing, you know, um, consciousness. So core Mandel Stonewood encourages receptivity. You know, it teaches that awareness is not something that one goes out and grabs, but something to which one opens kind of like a lotus flower and which one receives as a gift from the world. It enhances one's sensitivity to the subtle vibration, vibrational currents of the earth. It allows one to sink into a slower vibration than is usual for us humans and to appreciate the strength and power of the earth's heartbeat from the depths. Many metaphysical oriented people, and of course, including myself, tend to be attracted to fast, high vibrational stones that create a lot of interior action and visionary states. And of course, you know that to me by my episodes of the stones that I'm covering. But this stone, and that's not wrong, by the way, but one should not miss out on a lot of interior action of um, pleasures and nourishment you can derive from resonating with the slow strong currents of stones, such as Coromandel. From attending to slow pulsations emanated by these beautiful little stones, one can ultimately learn to be in tuned or ride, so to speak, the earth's heartbeat. This can be an ecstatic experience, all the more intense because of its leisurely pace and unfathomable death, depth, sorry. In spiritual healing, Coromandel Stonewood provides a placid, slow moving, long lasting and curative vitality. It is ideal for use in recovery from chronic conditions. These stones vibrationally support the telomeres on one's DNA. These structures which help DNA to self-replicate are defined as regions of receptive nucleotide sequences at each end of the chromatid, which protects the end of the chromosome from deteriorating or fusing with neighborhood, uh, not neighborhood, neighboring rather, um, chromosomes. Telomeres preserve cellular memory, and they do this through protecting 
the chromospheres that carry um, that memory. Aging and death can be linked to telomere deterioration. The deep, strong, and consistent vibrations of Coromandel Stone would offer a vibrational template of resonance whereby cellular memory can ride on currents that support replication without deterioration. Basically, Coromandel is a stone of well-being and longevity. And it arises from the cellular level. Um, it harmonizes well with stones in the Jasper family, especially, especially Revelation Stone. It also resonates to the currents of other varieties of petrified wood. And one can work with these to further enhance one's earth connection. Meditating with a grid of Coromandel Stone wood and other types of petrified wood can result in what's called a web of connection to the underlying memory field of the whole earth. And this can be a boon to psychics and intuitives. Um, the high vibrational stones that link successfully with it include sorolite azestulite, sinazes, New Zealand carnelian, and pararite, and Santa Rosa azestulite. So we've gone over a couple of those. We've gone over Sinazes and Santa Rosa Zestulite. Don't worry, Sorolite Zestulite is coming up shortly. Um, so let's talk about how it affects us. Spiritually, Coromandel Stonewood facilitates the slowing down of one's vibrations, enabling energetic entrainment with the earth. It can also trigger one's entry into Lemurian consciousness. So another stone, like I talked about with the Coralite, that, you know, s slow down, stop to smell the roses. We are so fast-paced. We're, we're, we're having 60,000 thoughts, you know, in a very short period of time in our day. And it's over nonsense routines, what we have to do, always something in the future of later on that day or later on that week or later on that year. And we have to learn, we have to live in the now. Because if we worry about tomorrow or later on, we're not living in the now. We're living in what we're trying to control in the future. And we cannot control the future in that way. We're not co-creating. We're saying, no, 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 we know how to do it better. And we don't know how to do it better. Not at this point. Emotionally, Coromandel Stonewood facilitates inner peace, contentment, and the gradual dawning of a static resonance with the Earth's heartbeat. And that's why it kind of slows down your vibration as opposed to heightening it. That way you can connect with the Earth and and its chakras, and its ley lines, and its heartbeat. And it, you're able to do that when, of course, you're in a quiet place. And you do the heart alignment with, with the stone, and then you can either sit or lie down with the stone, close your eyes, and just see what comes to you. See how you feel. See if anything physically happens to you. See if you get any visions and your mind's eye, or if you hear anything. It's amazing how with certain stones, it can connect you to earth, or it could connect you to the cosmos. Um, physically, Coromandel Stonewood can be used to enhance one's overall vitality. It also offers vibrational support to telomeres, for the preservation of cellular memory and longevity. That helps us live longer. Um, there's a wonderful affirmation here. I'm going to say it once and then I'm going to break it down and say it slower. So all together, the affirmation for stone, uh, for Coromandel Stonewood is, I enter with uh, reverence into the memory of the earth and I allow myself to be awakened to the slow, resonating power of the Earth's heartbeat. Okay, I'll take it piece by piece. 
I enter with reverence into the memory of the earth. I enter with reverence into the memory of the earth. And I allow myself to be awakened. And I allow myself to be awakened to the slow, resonating power of the Earth's heartbeat. To the slow, resonating power of the Earth's heartbeat. So one more time all together, I enter with uh, reverence into the memory of the earth and I allow myself to be awakened to the slow resonating power of the earth's heartbeat. I love whenever I'm talking about the stones um, that I'm covering, I always hold one in my hand. I love to get the, the extra oomph from them while I'm explaining the stones. Um, So I hope that that's helped you with at least earth stones. And there are many, many earth stones. Um, I don't know if I've talked about shaman stones before. I know I have on my blog, um, but I will do an episode on shamanic stones, um, shaman stones. They usually come one male, one female. They're not that expensive. You can get them on Etsy, eBay, maybe even Amazon. Um, They, uh, I want to prepare you guys for a shamanic journey. I have a 10 minute, I believe, and a 20 minute drumming track that I will include as just an episode. And I'm just going to call it the drumming track. It's going to only have the drumming and maybe a rattle track on there as well. Um, That you will use for your um, shamanic journey. And I'm going to prepare you for all of that. We're going to take steps to that. So these are some stones, if you're interested in shamanic work, that um, really resonate with not only the earth, but grounding you and doing what needs to be done with your uh, but physical vibration. So you have these stones that complement one another. Um, shaman stones are great to work with too. And you won't believe what comes to you in these journeys with the drumming track. Some people prefer the rattle and that's fine. That's why I think I'm going to put up both of them. I find um, that if I put the drumming track up a little bit louder, and of course, if you can, listen to it in your headphones. Um, Now I'm giving you this information before I even do it, but I want to say it here, um, and I will reiterate it later on while it's on my mind, because I am going to talk about power and totem animals. These are beings you're going to run into in um, one, the three worlds and your sacred garden. So it's important to go over that. I got a lovely book, um, that, um, talks about all of that, plus all the different types of power animals there are. And so I will be doing an episode on that as well. Again, I want to do an episode on channeling. And I'm going to ask one more time, Jenna, please get in touch with me and let me know if I can um, share your voice message because believe it or not, it will. there are no stupid questions. There's no reason to be embarrassed. It will help other listeners. So, and for everybody else, please do leave me a voice message. If you have a question or you want something covered, or you want to know more about something that I talked about on here in one of my episodes, whether it be a stone or um, something to deal with anything, psychic, divination, tarot, mediumship, whatever the case may be. Um, It's in the, the show notes 
you can, there's a link there that you can just go and it, you can just leave me a voice message. Just know I'm asking Jenna now because I wasn't sure if she knew that, you know, it can be used in a future episode. If I, especially if I think it is something that is going to benefit the rest of you and Jenna's message would benefit the rest of you, especially now that we're going to get back to talking about, you know, the different Claire's. And so if you can let me know at info at psychic medium, nyc.com, that's my email address. Anybody else can email me as well. If you have a question and you don't want to leave a voice message, um, or if you leave a voice message and you don't want it on the show, just say, I don't want this on the show. Um, you can visit my blog at psychicmediumnewyorkcity.com and my services are at psychicmediumnyc.com. So I hope you enjoy today's show. Go take time for yourself. Stop to smell the roses. Be kind and gentle to yourself and others. Sending you all my love and light. Mwah.